Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on quantum statistics. This is video number 15, and what we're going to do is derive the Boltzmann factor. So, just to start out, the Boltzmann factor looks like this. Let's we'll say the probability of state s occurring is equal to 1 over z times e to the energy of the state minus the energy of the state divided by Boltzmann's constant of the temperature. So that's what we're going to derive. Now, Boltzmann factor is probably the most important quantity in statistical mechanics, so this is a very important thing to understand. And hopefully after this, we'll genuinely understand how to do it, or what it means. But the argument is quite subtle. There isn't much maths, but the argument, as I said, is quite subtle. So, let's begin. The first thing is, we need to look at the fundamental uh, assumption of statistical mechanics, and that says that any, in any isolated system, all microstates are equally, po equally probable. Now, the issue here is we need to come up with an isolated system. A single atom is not an isolated system, for example, because a single atom is inside some sort of other system. It's inside what we might call a reservoir. So we need to uh, need to come up with this. We'll, we'll say this isolated system. So let's think about having the universe as a reservoir. You could say that the single atom is inside the universe, and well, the energy or, or the the universe doesn't change. So the universe and the single atom are an isolated system or I'm going to talk about a reservoir from now on. So we'll say a reservoir and a single atom are now to be considered an isolated system. All right, so that's the way we're going to do this. So think about, like I said, think about an electron going uh, in an atom going from states S1 to S2. So the electron goes from, we'll say, state S1 to state S sub 2. Now, I'm not actually saying that this is an S orbital or whatever it is, I'm just saying give it an arbitrary placeholder, call it state 1 and state 2, s sub 1 and s sub 2. Okay? So, the universe will now have a large number of states, or the reservoir will have a large number of states which are accessible because, to, because or to the atom. So we'll say we have, there, there's our atom, and here is our reservoir, or universe. Well, if the atom is in state s1, well then because it's in state with s1, there will be a certain number of states available to the atom in the reservoir. All right. Now, if we then go from state S2, or S1, excuse me, to go to state S sub 2, well, then there will be a different number of states available in the, uh, in, the, in the reservoir, available to the atom because it's in a particular state. So what we'll say is as follows. We'll say that the multiplicity, or the number of states, available to the reservoir, or in the reservoir, when the atom in, is in state 1, is going to be written like this. And the number of states available to the atom in the reservoir, when it, the atom is in state 2, is going to be written like, like so. So you might say this is the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S1. This is the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S2. Alright? Now, think about it. In general, we'll say, in general, the energy of, we'll say, one energy level inside an atom is less than or greater than or equal to, well, it actually wouldn't be equal to, less than or greater than the energy of another level. So there, this, this is going to affect the multiplicity of your reservoir. So let's just rewrite that by saying the following. So the multiplicity of our reservoir, when the atom is in state of S1, and the multiplicity of the reservoir and the atom is in state S2 are usually different. And this is because the energy of the atom when it's in state S1 and the energy of the atom when it's in state S2 are also different. So let's say, for example, that energy level 1 is less than energy level 2. Or actually, I'll, I'll write it in the notation that I'm, that I'm using. It'll be consistent. So the energy of state S1 
is less than the energy of state S2. Well, what that means is if, there's, if the atom is taking less energy out of the reservoir, that means there's more energy left in the reservoir, which increases its multiplicity. Conversely, if the energy level when the atom is in state S2 is higher, it will take more energy from the reservoir, leaving less in the reservoir, reducing the multiplicity of the reservoir. So in general, we can say that the higher energy level states for the atom reduce the multiplicity of the reservoir. So in this case, the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S2 is, is smaller than the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S sub 1. Alright, so let's just, let's try and take an example of this. Let's say, for example, that the energy of state S1 is less than the energy of state S S sub 2. Let's also say that the multiplicity of the reservoir, the, the number of states available to the atom in the reservoir, when the atom is in state S1, is equal to 20. And the number of states available to the atom inside the reservoir, when the atom is in state S2, is equal to 5. So the combined, the combined system, in other words, the atom and the reservoir, has more accessible states uh, has more accessible states in S1, so state S1 is more probable. Because there are, the, the universe now has more states here, there are more states here available to the, the combined system than there are here. So surely this system, or this state, is more probable. In this case, the probability of state 1 occurring is equal to 4 times the probability of state 2 occurring. And that's pretty straightforward, 5 is the 20. Alright, so what we, need, what we need to do, and by the way, this is the probability of the state occurring in the atom. And this is very important. Although we're looking at the mathematics of the reservoir, it's actually applying to the atom. And that's, that's, the, important, that's the important point here. By looking at the multiplicities of the reservoir, we can work out the probabilities of states occurring in an atom. So, let's generalize. the probability of finding an atom in a state is directly prop to, we'll say proportional to the number of accessible states in the reservoir. Now that's the important thing. If you can accept that or understand that, well then you can very easily derive the Boltzmann factor. Like I said, there's very little mathematics in this. So what we can say is that the probability of state S1 occurring is directly proportional to the number of available states in the reservoir when the atom is in that state. The probability of state 2 occurring is directly proportional to the number of states or the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S2, S sub 2. Now, so is there any way we can write this? Let's go ahead and do it. We can rewrite this as follows by saying that the, if we take the ratio of these, we get rid of the proportionality factor. So the probability of the atom being in state S2 divided by the probability of the atom being in state S1 is equal to the multiplicity of the reservoir when it's in state S2, the atom is in state S2, and the multiplicity of the reservoir when the atom is in state S1. The reason we, we now have an equals is because by taking a ratio we get rid of the proportionality constants. Alright, so that is the equation we're now going to work on. Alright, so let me rewrite that equation. P S sub 2 divided by P S sub 1 is equal to the multiplicity divided by the multiplicity. Now, how, what is multiplicity? Why do we use multiplicity? Well, we use multiplicity because it leads us to entropy. So entropy could be written if we wanted as the multiplicity directly, but instead, for argument's sake, we take the natural logarithm of it, and then it's conventional to add Boltzmann's constant because it's nice to get, it gives good units. 
So that's where we, de we define the entropy as follows. So we can rearrange this, of course, as the following. Alright, so that's just taking the dividing cross by k, taking an exponential on both sides, and the exponentials and natural logarithms are in inverse functions. Okay, so that allows us to rewrite this equation in green in terms of these exponentials, Boltzmann's constant, and the entropy. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have that the, this is going to, and we'll say I'm going to take the exponential below and just bring it straight up. Okay, so we're going to get e to the s reservoir s sub 2 minus s reservoir s sub 1 divided by k. Okay, and for neatness, I'm going to write that as delta reservoir s over k exponentiated. Okay, and that's equal to p so s sub 2 divided by p s sub 1. Okay, pretty straightforward stuff. Now we're going to invoke some thermodynamics. And if you're not too confident with thermodynamics, that's okay. You can accept the equation if you like, but if you don't, if you don't accept it, I can explain it very briefly. So the thermodynamic identity says that du is equal to TDS plus or minus PdV plus mu dN, whereas mu is the chemical potential. It's the energy added to a system when you add a single particle. Um, that's the change in entropy, change in number of particles, change in the volume. Now du is usually much, much greater than dv, so we're going to get rid of this term because it's small. And dn is often zero. Then dn is usually zero, or even if dn is non-zero, it's still usually smaller than du. So I'm going to get rid of this term also. So we're left with that du is equal to tds, or let's say du is approximately t times ds. Okay? So what we can say is that du reservoir is equal to t times ds reservoir or ds reservoir is equal to du reservoir divided by the temperature t. Alright, so the next thing we need to realize is that the, we have an isolated system. The, the atom and the universe of the reservoir are an isolated system. So if we add something to the reservoir, we must have taken it from the atom. And if we add something to the atom, we must have taken it from the reservoir. What that means is that du reservoir is equal to minus du of the atom, or ds reservoir is equal to minus ds of the atom. All right? So that's where, in actual fact, this is where this e to the minus e over kt comes from in the Boltzmann, fa in, in the Boltzmann factor. So where are we going to go from now? Well. The, the change in entropy up here, we're talking about a change in entropy in the reservoir, right? The change in entropy in the reservoir due to an atom going from, from a state 1 to state 2 is quite small. So what we can say here is that delta, re, delta reservoir, or the el change in entropy in the reservoir, is approximately zero. So we can now instead use ds reservoir. But we already have a formula for ds reservoir. It's equal to du reservoir over t. All right? So plug that into our equation. So now what we have is the probability of the atom being in state S2 divided by the probability of the atom being in state S1 is equal to du reservoir divided by kt. Okay? But that's equal to minus du of the atom divided by kt. Okay? Now I'm just going to do a small bit of... Um, uh, actually, I won't, I won't yet. So let's just rearrange this. PS2 divided P sub S1 is equal to minus outside of. So U atom in S sub 2 minus U atom S sub 1 over KT. And that's it. That's really all we need to get. But I'm going to rewrite it in another way. For convention, I'm going to say that the total energy of the entire universe is equal to U 
the energy of a single atom is equal to E and to get the total energy we multiply it by the number of particles. So I'm not going to use the placeholder U for an atom, I want to use the placeholder E for the atom and U is the placeholder for the entire universe. So for that reason I'm going to rewrite this equation as P sub S2 divided by P sub S1 is equal to minus E S2 minus E S1 divided by KT. And now at this stage we should definitely have it looking something like you've seen before. So I'm just going to fin just um, I'm going to clean this up and actually it will show you the, the actual probabilities. But this is the equation. This is a Boltzmann factor and so is this. So just bear with me now and we we complete the proof or the derivation. It's not really a proof, I suppose. Okay. So what we had is that the probability of the atom being in state S sub 2 divided by the probability of the atom being in state S sub 1 is the exponential of the atom being in the energy of state 2 minus the energy of state 1 negated divided by k times t. Okay, and if you want you could rearrange this as follows. You could say that p s sub 2 p oh, divided by, that's incorrect, divided by e to the minus e s sub 2 over kt is equal to p s sub 1 divided by e to the minus e s sub 1 divided by kt. Now if two functions which change are equal at any time, they must be equal for all time. That's just a small bit of mathematics. They're equal to a constant. And for argument's sake, we call a constant 1 over z. That is the convention. And we call this thing here the partition function. And if you look at video number 16, we have the partition function, or the derivation of the partition function. So now what we can do is, in general, we can rewrite this. We can say the probability of an atom being in state s is equal to 1 over z, which is the partition function, multiplied by e to the minus e of s divided by k times t. All right, where this is the partition, and this is our Boltzmann factor. So the point here is that for every single state, for every single, yeah, for every state, there is an appropriate Boltzmann factor. Okay, so we can say that the probability of a state occurring is proportional to the Boltzmann factor, or it's equal to the Boltzmann factor multiplied by this normalization constant which we call the partition function. And you'll see in video number 16 that the partition function is not just a normalization constant, its physical significance is that it essentially counts the probability of your, your state occurring or the number, it counts the number of accessible states. Alright, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel and if you're in a good mood you might also click on an ad. Thank you.